Hiya pals, Disney devotee here. If you are new to this channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. And to all the people who have been here since the beginning, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, I would love to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, and please feel free to share any of my videos and shorts. Uh, it just helps the algorithm and it helps get more people over to my channel. And if you haven't yet, um, I encourage you to go see my video about doing the Disney College program. Uh, it's called the Disney College Program My Story. It's sort of part one to this video where I essentially discuss how I got involved, um, the whole application and interview process, and then how I was initially hired to work at the Bippity Boppity Boutique. So today I will be discussing my time working for Walt Disney World, more specifically working at the Bippity Boppity Boutique. So let's get to it. Disney devotee, Disney devotee, da, 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 Disney devotee, Disney devotee. If you saw my video about doing the Disney College program, then you already know in 2008, I was assigned to work at the Bippity Boppity Boutique in what was called at the time, Downtown Disney. Now at Walt Disney World, it is referred to as Disney Springs, um, but I believe at Disneyland, it's still called Downtown Disney. Um, Leave a comment down below if you go to Disneyland or you know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so the original Bippity Boppity Boutique opened in 2006 in the World of Disney store. And essentially the premise is Cinderella's fairy godmother owns and operates this boutique. And all the employees of her boutique are fairy godmothers in training. And we perform princess makeovers where we're trying to, quote, earn our wings. I will occasionally refer to fairy godmothers in training as fidgets, F-G-I-T, just so you know. And I might also sometimes call the Bippity Boppity Boutique BBB, just... That's just what I called it sometimes, and we referred to ourselves as fidgets. So if you hear me use those terms, that's what it means. Also, um, just a couple more Disney terms for you, just before we get into the thick of it. <laughs> uh, employees of Walt Disney World or any Disney park <clears throat> are referred to as cast members, not employees. Also, customers or people who have paid to be at the park or, you know, anyone who's in the stores, someone who's not a cast member is referred to as a guest. And any place where you may be working where a guest can see you is referred to as on stage. And then places where guests cannot see you, such as warehouses, um, break rooms, anything like that, is called backstage. Furthermore, uniforms are not called uniforms, they're called costumes. So just keep that in mind. Um, I may refer to it in those terms. So I hope you enjoyed your little mini Disney education. Now, in the Bippity Boppity Boutique, we offered different makeover packages. Um, the time I was there, we had three different options. Uh, I'm sure it's changed since then, and I know for sure the prices have changed. But essentially, there was the least expensive, the most basic package, which included the hair styling, the makeup with a face gem, and then a princess sash. And then the next step up from that included everything I just listed plus nail polish. And then finally, the ultimate or most expensive package included everything. So hair, makeup with a face gem, nails, and then a princess dress with a matching crown and scepter. And the little girl would get to come in and look at the dresses hanging up in the boutique, pick the ones she liked and try them on. 
And I thought it was really cute or fun where the princess would get to go home with her leftover makeup and nail polish, if she paid for the nail polish, of course. But it was like a little makeup palette and it had light shimmery eyeshadow, uh, lip gloss, and I think blush, I'm pretty sure. But you know, it was very light. It wasn't very opaque. You know, it's like any kind of makeup set you'd buy for a young child at the store. Also, the nail polish was in the same vein. It was very light. They had two different shades and the princess would get to have both bottles of nail polish to take home and when we did the makeover she would choose which color she wanted at the time it was a glittery pink or a glittery blue but they were both very clear and glittery and honestly essentially the same color and at the bippity boppity boutique we offered makeovers for anyone over the age of two our most typical clients were young girls, usually under the age of 10, but we would sometimes get adults. And we did offer the cool dude for boys um, if they wanted it. Um, we uh, didn't really have any, you know, non-gender specific makeovers. I'm not sure if that's changed. I just recently saw an article that the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique is going to be offering more inclusive options. So I think that's fabulous. Way to go, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. And in addition to the makeovers, another big draw of the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique was the experience. Um, I always felt like the fidgets or fairy godmothers in training were playing a character role because we were. We interacted with all of our guests in our role. We were not ourselves. I was fairy godmother Amanda and I lived in a magical land where I knew all the Disney princesses and Cinderella's fairy godmother was my supervisor and Mickey Mouse was my boss and it was just so much fun to play the part and that was what I loved most about my job was was that um, that make-believe creating that magic every day jobs before you can begin you have to be trained you have to learn the company learn you know all the ins and outs and well how to do the job basically <laughs> um, and as I said in my Disney college program video before anyone can work for the Disney company you have to complete what is called traditions and essentially traditions is an eight hour long training where you learn about the history of the company and it's kind of like a rah-rah Disney and you learn the two finger point because in a lot of cultures it is offensive to point with one hand so you use two fingers or one hand um, it's it's definitely like a big rite of passage because once you finish traditions you are like an official employee of Disney World and you get your name tag which I happen to have right here it's backwards but <laughs> here's my Walt Disney World name tag I still have it which was super exciting um, I also at that point got my employee ID which I could use to swipe to get backstage um, and I think it also had like my employee number if I I think I used that for clocking in but I can't remember um, and then of course like I said in the college program video once you finish traditions as you are now an official Disney employee, that is when you can go into the parks for free. So right after I finished Traditions, I was at Magic Kingdom that day. <laughs> it was awesome. It was my very first time at Walt Disney World in the parks. 
Now, my memory is fuzzy because it was 2008, but I feel like it was traditions or a training around traditions where I was also taken on a tour of downtown Disney and they showed us all the stores and, you know, all the backstage areas, any of that good stuff. And then I was fitted for my costume and... I know the costume has since changed and I still think it's adorable, but I personally loved my costume at the Bippity Boppity Boutique. So let's talk about what it looked like. My fairy godmother in training costume had a mid-length purple skirt with a white lace trim and then a light purple polyester silky button-up top that had a white lace trim on the collars and then it had three-quarter length sleeves also with white lace trim and then over that we wore a red vest which zipped up and then right about here so the top of the vest was like um it had Cinderella's face on it, the uh, Bippity Boppity Boutique logo. And finally, we had a, it was like a purple crown or headpiece with purple lace that went over the back. And then we had to provide and wear nude colored pantyhose underneath and then black Mary Jane shoes. I thought the costume was so pretty and I honestly felt pretty in it. But I will say, like a lot of the Disney Parks costumes, it was not breathable and very hot. <laughs> I'm not sure why they designed them that way, but yes, it did not breathe at all. <clears throat> and you know, I was lucky enough that my career or my job was inside in air conditioning but that being said uh, when it was slow in the boutique we would actually go outside and pick sea dust guests and talk to guests about the boutique to try to kind of drum up business and just create magic uh, and I would always come back inside just drenched in sweat furthermore um, when you are a Disney cast member, if you are on stage anywhere where a guest can see you, you are not allowed to take off pieces of your costume. You have to keep the look and create the magic. So that being said, because I was in the Disney College program, I had to take the bus from Disney Springs back to my apartment. And the bus stop at Disney Springs was out in the open where guests could see us. So, I had to sit outside, often in very intense heat and humidity in my costume, and wait for the bus, and sometimes that could be a while. There was a locker room where I could go and change at the end of the day if I wanted to, I will admit that, <laughs> but um, after being on my feet for sometimes 12 plus hours a day, I just wanted to catch the next bus, get back to my apartment, and go to sleep. Um, but you know, again, minuscule things. I'm not really, it, it would, I'm not meaning to make a mountain out of a molehill, but again, the costume was hot. <laughs> Also, the boutique was very small at the time. It would get very crowded and very full of the fumes of our strong hairspray and we'd be breathing that in and glitter and I would often be hot. I mean, I, I'm a warm person anyway, so it could get really warm in those costumes, but I thought they were cute. And you know what? The skirts had pockets, so I can't complain too much. And after completing traditions and getting my costume and my name tag, I was also given a little red ribbon, which I stuck on the back of my name tag. You can still see the adhesive of where it was. <laughs> and it said, earning my ears, which meant I was training, I was learning. So if you ever see a Disney cast member with that little red ribbon that says, earning my ears, Please be patient with them, be kind, they're still learning. 
And my very first day at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, I was so nervous. I was very excited, but mostly nervous. <laughs> um, that first day, I was assigned a trainer who was another fairy godmother in training. And she took me into like a little conference room where she taught me about our packages and the different hairstyles that we offered. And then I was trained on how to do the three hairstyles on a wig attached to a styrofoam wig head. At the time, the three hairstyles that we offered were the fairy tale, the diva, and the pop princess. I believe those have since changed or I know have at least been updated. But essentially, the base for all three makeovers was putting the hair up in a very, very high, very, very tight ponytail with tons of hair gel. Um, and if my memory serves correctly, when I learned how to do it on the wig, we didn't use hair gel. So in a sense, that kind of put me at a disadvantage because I wasn't really fully practicing it because it was a different experience at least for me once you add in the hair gel because I quickly learned on the floor that if you think you're using enough hair gel you need to at least double it because you're not. <laughs> I can say that the fairy tale was easily my favorite hairstyle that we offered. It was basically the classic Disney princess bun on the top of the head that came with a little tiara and the princess would get to pick out which color tiara she would like to go with her bun. And maybe in the future I could do a little video on how to do all three hairstyles because I still remember quite well. I do those hairstyles in my dreams still. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to share that knowledge with the world. The diva hairstyle was basically a hair piece that, again, we would pin on the top of the head and then tease the hair at the top and shape it into kind of basically like a bun on the top of the head. And then the back would have long straight pieces of hair in tiny thin braids and like Mickey heads going down it. And I'll try to include pictures, you know, from advertisements or the past. I don't want to include any pictures of children, obviously, without permission or anything like that. But I'm sure I can find some photos to try to give you an idea of what it looked like. Um, I assumed that it was kind of based maybe on Belle's ball gown hair, but I don't know. I wasn't crazy about it, but it was okay. It, it didn't look horrible. Um, the princess would get to pick out what shade of hair she wanted and we had you know the natural hairstyle colors blonde brown maybe light brown and black and then i think we had i know we had bubblegum pink and then i'm not sure if we had any other fun colors but i do remember there was a bubblegum pink and <laughs> I, I, I recall lots of um, parents trying to talk their little girls out of picking the bubblegum pink hair piece. <laughs> I stayed out of it. Mm. <laughs> and finally, the pop princess was far and away my least favorite hairstyle to do. And also just the aesthetically wise, the one that we offered that I did not care for. <laughs> and how that hairstyle worked was we would separate the hair into um, four pieces and then you would have to put it in four really tight twists like up against the head. If you think you're doing it tight enough, you're not doing it tight enough. Go tighter. That's how tight. I mean, all all three hairstyles. Oh, I, I honestly felt so bad for the little girls. They probably had really bad headaches by the end of the day because it was so tight. But it, I digress. Um, at the end of the four twists, we would put little clips, multicolored clips. And then again, we would pin a hair piece at the top, kind of the back top of the head and tease it up like there was no tomorrow and it'd be standing straight up and 
Oh boy, that was something else, let me tell you. Um, and I believe those hair pieces were also available in the same colors. So black, brown, blonde, and bubblegum pink. Those are the colors I remember. There might have been blue too, like a light blue. If you know, please comment down below. Um, also, kind of towards the last half of when I was at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, we started offering a Hannah Montana makeover, if that doesn't um, take you back at all. <laughs> and um, that one was interesting. Let me put it that way. Um, we would still do the makeup, the nails, the face gem, and then we would pin their hair up tight against their head and put the Hannah Montana wig on and then they'd have like a little Hannah Montana outfit. It was very basic. It was very simple. Um, I was pretty neutral on it. It wasn't a hard makeover to do by any means. And um, occasionally some parents were a little unhappy because it was so basic and simple, but you know... Hannah Montana wears the blonde wig. I'm not exactly sure what else they were expecting, but anyway, um, that was another makeover option that came kind of a little bit later during my time there. I feel like I was trained on the wig head for like half a day, maybe a whole day. Um, it's fuzzy. I, d I don't fully remember, but probably because of my anxiety, it felt like it wasn't long enough and I was like, Ah, I'm never gonna get this. Um, but after I learned how to do the hairstyles on the wig head, I then shadowed my trainer on the floor at the Bippity Boppity Boutique. And I would watch her do the hairstyles, watch how she interacted with the guests, see where all the supplies were in our little carts, you know, all that good stuff. And then eventually I kind of slowly upgraded to doing the makeup and nails while she did the hair. Um, because sometimes there would be two fairy godmothers in training per chair. So one would do the hair while the other would do the makeup and nails. And sometimes, you know, we'd switch the task back and forth. Other times, if we were maybe a little low staffed or it was slower or busier, um, it would just be one fairy godmother in training per chair and you would do all of it. So it just kind of varied. But at the beginning, you know, I was on a chair with my trainer. And as I said, when I learned how to do the hairstyles on the wigs, um, you know, I don't remember practicing with the hair gel. And that really took a lot of getting used to for me. That was completely new to me. And quite honestly, before I worked at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, I hadn't really done styling of other people's hair that much. I had done my hair for shows and obviously I had worked with children a lot. If you saw my college program video, you'd know that. But um, this was all new territory for me and it was a little overwhelming. But anyway, um, we had this very intense hair gel and we would squirt it on the back of our non-dominant hand and you would scoop it off the back of your hand and put it on the child's hair, take the comb, comb it through, work it up, make it as flat and smooth as possible, as tight as you can on the back and the front until it's at the top of their head and there's no bumps and it's up against their head as tightly as possible. And that was, that was difficult for me. Um, and once my training was through, obviously I was let loose and, um, there were several times I didn't get the hair up high enough or I didn't get the hair tight enough or flat enough and it was embarrassing. I, I, won't, I won't lie because if a manager saw it, they would send the kid back to your chair and you'd have to kind of redo their hair and you know, that bruises your ego a little bit. Um, but you still have to stay in character and be like, oh, so happy to see you again. You're back so soon and you know um, kind of redo it. And it took me a little bit. And I also really struggled in the beginning with teasing the hair pieces. Um, 
because oh my goodness you have to use a lot of hairspray and a lot of teasing um like I, like i said if um if you think you're using enough hair gel and enough hairspray, you're probably not. You need to double it. And uh, I caught on to that after a while. And, you know, it just, it, I would say maybe took me two weeks to a month to really feel confident in the hairstyles. And once I was on the floor on my own, another thing I struggled with was the timing. Uh, they were very strict or, you know, they wanted you to turn around the chairs as quickly as possible and get everything done in 30 minutes or less. And <laughs> that was hard for me at first. It took me a while because I wanted to talk to the kids and interact with them as much as I could. And, you know, I was struggling with the hairstyles and it was rough. And they'd be like, you need to go faster, go faster. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> But, you know, I got there. But I would say those were the things that were the hardest for me in the beginning to get down. You know, talking to the guests in my character as fairy godmother in training Amanda was not hard. I got that right away. But um, getting the look correct for the hairstyles and... Um, you know, getting it done fast enough. Those were the things that stressed me out. And I, you know, I would have to occasionally just like take a deep breath or go to the restroom, which I called the wishing well, and just take some deep breaths and refocus because it can be stressful. It's, it's hard. Uh, but I got there, you know, I got there and it was it was a good lesson in just hanging in there during the tough times and believing that if you just practice and work hard that you will get it. Also, uh, I, I think it was like within the first three months I was there, myself and all the new fairy godmothers in training, or it might have been all of the fairy godmothers in training, I can't quite remember. But anyway, we had to go to a hair braiding class where we went to a salon in, I think it was Kissimmee, and I remember us carpooling together because I had no way to get there. I didn't have a car. I just took the college program bus. <laughs> but anyway, it was an all-day training where they taught us different ways to braid hair, but more importantly, we, le we learned about different scalp conditions such as dandruff, but more importantly, lice, which really came in handy because unfortunately, um, that was part of the job. We did have to deal with that quite a bit. And after we finished that all-day training, we got a certificate, and I could brag that I was certified in hair braiding. Ooh. Like I said earlier, easily, easily my favorite part of the job was interacting with guests. Uh, Playing the part of the fairy godmother in training was a joy for me. Um, I would meet people from all around the world every single day. And I would have to answer questions like, where is Cinderella? How is the fairy godmother doing? Where did you get the pixie dust for your wand? You know, and it was a great challenge to think quick on my feet sometimes and improvise. And, oh, well, yes, my wand is full of pixie dust because, you know, she is really good friends with the fairy godmother. So she wanted to share a little bit of magic with everyone who comes here. And, you know, different, different things like that. It was always special, always. Every single guest I met um was special and it was a gift to me not just to them and i loved loved having the little children especially who still believed in the magic and thought i was a real fairy godmother in training and the princesses were real and wow where's mickey mouse where does he live how's minnie and oh i got asked a lot if mickey and minnie were really married and oh <laughs> 
that was a little tough to navigate, but I'd be like, oh, you know, Minnie Mouse, Mickey loves her with all of his heart, and aren't they a great couple? And, you know, try to kind of change the subject a little bit. <laughs> but, um, yes, getting to share in that magic and those special moments is something that I hold dear in my heart, and it's something I will never forget. I've mentioned pixie dust a few times, and, you know, I just realized that maybe not everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about. So let me share how that worked, because it was one of my favorite parts of the makeover. <laughs> so each fairy godmother would have our own little magic wand. The bottom would be like a clear tube that we would fill up with the pixie dust, which was a very, very fine glitter, not like your normal craft glitter. Very, very fine, kind of silver and green and very pretty when the light hits it. Oh, I loved it. I'm a fan of glitter. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I love glitter. <laughs> um, Anyway, so the bottom was filled with the pixie dust, and then the top was a pink star with little holes in the top, so we could sprinkle our guests with a little bit of pixie dust. And essentially, the way the boutique was set up was um, I would be standing here, and then the chair would be in front of me with the back facing me, just like any hairstylist chair. Um, and then behind me would be the mirror. So for the entirety of the makeover, the princess or the cool dude or the knight or the prince or whomever would not be able to see the makeover that was taking place. And once I got towards the end, I would motion for a photo pass or royal photographer as we called them to come over for the great reveal. Oh. I loved doing the reveal. I would put the face shield over their eyes and tell them to close their eyes and make a wish. I would sprinkle them with pixie dust and I would say, bippity boppity boo, may all your princess wishes and dreams come true. And they would be coated in the pixie dust and glitter. And then I would tell them to keep their eyes closed and I would turn their chair around and they would look in the mirror and see, oh, they're so beautiful. It's so exciting. I loved the reveal. There were so many excited little children. It was the sweetest, sweetest thing. Oh, and also I would like to mention you don't have to be a paying customer at the Bippity Boppity Boutique to get pixie dusted. You can stop by and ask to be pixie dusted and a fidget will be more than happy to pixie dust you. I believe at Magic Kingdom you can also go to, I think it's Sir Mickey's and get pixie dusted. Uh, but just keep in mind, this is very fine glitter and you will be absolutely coated in it. It will follow you home. You will have this pixie dust with you for the rest of your life. I swear I'm still finding pixie dust 15 years later. So keep that in mind if you do choose to get pixie dusted. <laughs> the happiness and the excitement I got to share in with so many people every single day was indescribable and it made my heart happy. I mean, I was getting paid to create magic and make others feel special every day. I mean, wow, how cool is that? And typically a couple times a day we would have magical moments and this would include usually making an announcement and having all the princesses line up and then we would proceed to teach them how to do the Cinderella wave. And guess what? You are super lucky because right now, today, I am going to teach you how to do the Cinderella wave. Are you ready? Okay. This is how we do it. <clears throat> wash the windows, wash the windows. Oops, missed a spot. <laughs> 
So that is how we did the Cinderella wave and we would teach the princesses and we would do it a couple times and then clap and cheer and we would announce if there were any birthday girls or any special celebrations usually at that time as well or sing happy birthday and do the wave and you know it was, it was a lot of fun. And during my time at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, I had several Make-A-Wish children come to my chair, and that was incredibly special. Uh, if you don't know, the Make-A-Wish Foundation is a non-for-profit organization that helps make wishes come true for critically ill children ages two and up. And that was always difficult for me to, you know, stay in character and be happy because um, I would have parents cry and I would hold them and hug them and thank me for, for, for making it so magical and special <clears throat> for their child. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it still gets me emotional. Um, I would have princesses sometimes who were too sick to talk or move. Um, but I would talk to them and try to make it special. And those moments were so moving. And I will always, always remember that and those special children. And I hope that I created a magical moment for them. Oh, um, as you can see, I still get very emotional and moved when I think about it. Um, I tried so hard to make it special. And I wanted to just make it an amazing Disney experience full of hope and love and and happiness and laughter and um, you know I just wanted to end their suffering or or take the family's mind off of it for a little while I met some amazing families through the Make-A-Wish Foundation and it's just, it's hard to put into words what that experience is like. And I will keep those memories in my heart for the rest of my life. Um, as I said in my Disney College program video, I had never lived anywhere on my own and I had never lived outside the Midwest until I did the Disney College program. <clears throat> Whew. Whew, emotional moment there, guys. Um, and it was such a growing experience for me because I would meet people from all over the world every day. For example, I might start my morning with a family from Australia and I would be like, wow, you're from Australia. Do you see koalas? Do you see kangaroos? And they would look at me like, uh, yeah, weirdo, they're pests. <laughs> and then after that, I might get a princess from Ireland or Scotland, and we would have a great discussion about the Loch Ness Monster. And do you think the Loch Ness Monster is real? Um, <laughs> um, you know, I was very 
young and gullible and, and first time on my own. So meeting people from all around the world just blew my mind. And uh, I got to learn about different cultures and accents and beliefs. And wow, I mean, how lucky am I? <laughs> um, you know, and another challenge sometimes with the job was getting people who did not speak the same language as me. And you would have to learn how to communicate, like, you know, smile, point at the pictures on the brochure so I knew what they wanted, you know, point at what color eyeshadow do you want. Um, we always made it work and we always end up smiling and laughing still. So... You know, that language barrier would get broken down. Just you can you can break through any barrier with love. I really do believe that. And I know it sounds so cheesy, but like I said earlier, these guests and my interactions, they filled my days with magic too. It wasn't just a one-way street. I wasn't just creating magic for them. They were creating magic for me. They were giving me a special gift of getting to know them and getting to connect with them, even if it was only for 30 minutes. Um, what a beautiful gift. And I'm so grateful for that gift. And thankfully, during my time at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, I didn't really have to deal with um, mean people or unhappy guests that often. Really, only one incident comes to mind, and it was kind of weird, if I'm being honest. Um, everything was great. It went normal. I did the makeover. We had the reveal. Everyone's happy. She gets down out of my chair. She's walking away. And in the middle of the boutique was like a pink bench, I guess. Like a, It went all the way around. It was like a circle bench. <clears throat> And they were walking up to the cash register to pay and she tripped and fell and started screaming and crying <laughs> and it got quiet and everyone looks and the mom like glares at me and then proceeds to blame me and say that I tripped her child, which number one, I would never do on purpose. Number two, I was still behind my chair. I wasn't even close to them. There was no possible way for me to trip her child, but she's continuing to scream and yell at me and blame me for her child just tripping and falling. Like, kids fall down. It happens. Adults fall down. People fall down. It happens. Um, thankfully, the manager came over before I had to really respond or say anything because I was just absolutely stunned. Like... We just had this great magical moment and now you're thinking that I would just trip your child? Like, what? Make it make sense, you know? I don't know if they were trying to get out of paying, like maybe buyer's remorse, you know? Like, oh crap, we're on our way to the cash register and now we have to pay. How can we get a free makeover out of this? Or maybe for some weird reason, they really thought I was this evil person who enjoys having happy, magical moments with children and then tripping them. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was so weird. And it was very, very upsetting. Like, I remember after they left, I, I had to go in the bathroom and I cried because it was incredibly hurtful. It was embarrassing. You know, it was... An accusation of my character, which um, I don't ever take lightly, and that's something I would never do. So, you know, I guess that's one unhappy memory, unfortunately, that <laughs> did occur at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. I would also sometimes have to face uncomfortable situations. Um, we would get children or guests with uh, scalp conditions is is what we would call it um, when a princess would sit down in my chair or anyone would sit down in my chair 
I would first check their scalp, uh, look at their hair while I'm talking to them, like, hello, princess, how are you? And I would, you know, check their scalp. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, they would have lice. Uh, but we would never call it lice. We would not say it on the floor. We wouldn't say that because, you know, it's not our job to diagnose anything like that. <clears throat> so if we encountered that, the next step would be, oh, excuse me, I need to step away for just one moment. I'll be right back. And you would locate the supervisor who was working on the floor at that time and say, I have a princess with a scalp condition. And then the supervisor would come over and check the child's hair and usually confirm or say, no, I think it's okay. Um, if it was lice or some kind of other scalp condition, but I mean, it was usually just lice, um, they would take the parents aside and very gently tell them, unfortunately, your child has a scalp condition. Um, you can go to a pharmacy and speak with a pharmacist who will help you get the treatment you need. Um, and then after that, I would sometimes do their makeup and nails if it wasn't that, that bad of a case. Uh, pixie dust them and then send them on their way with a bag of goodies to take home for later. And it was always really hard. It was always really sad because you don't want those situations to happen. And um, we wouldn't call it lice on the floor because, again, we wouldn't want to diagnose it. And we wouldn't want any other guests to hear that word and become alarmed. So we would call it Timon and Pumbas. <laughs> like, yeah, today I had a princess with Timon and Pumbas. It was our code word. Just like, um, you know, uh, janitors at Disney might refer to throwing up as a protein spill. If you ever hear that term, that's what it means. I'm, I'm giving you the 411 here, folks. <laughs> I know, it's really exciting. But yes, it would be very uncomfortable, um, mostly because the parents or the, the adults that brought the child would often be very embarrassed and upset and, you know, I encountered a couple mothers who cried because of it and, you know, you just feel horrible. You really do. Um, you know, it's just an unavoidable, unavoidable part of life sometimes, with, especially with kids. And depending on the situation, if it was a really, really bad case, um, sometimes the manager would send you home or, you know, send you to go take a shower and get a new uniform. Like, it just kind of depended on the situation. Um, thankfully, I never really encountered any very bad cases. Just one time where... Um, after that, the manager was like, oh, you, you can just go home, take a shower, change. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and, um, you know, I appreciated that. It it didn't really bother me that much. Um, you know, I, it wasn't like if I saw it, I was going to freak out because, number one, that's just rude and I wouldn't want to embarrass my guests any further. And again, number two, it's it's just par for the course with kids. It just happens especially when you have people from all around the world, different cultures, you know, it's going to happen, unfortunately. But yes, we did have to deal with Timon and Pumbas sometimes. I am going to end my video for today here. So this is basically part one of working at the Bippity Boppity Boutique. There will be a part two coming out where I especially talk about... Um, how much I loved working with the other cast members, the other fairy godmothers in training, and especially the PhotoPass employees, or, <laughs> oh dear, I said employees, oh no, the PhotoPass cast members. Um, there's one PhotoPass photographer I met at the boutique that I'm particularly fond of, which I will be talking about in my next video, so stay tuned for that. 
If you have any questions or if there's anything specific you would like to know about working for Walt Disney World or at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, please leave a comment below. I would love your input and I'd be more than happy to share and answer any of your questions. And of course, please like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. I would just really appreciate your help in my growing my little baby Disney channel. <laughs> um, I have a lot more content coming up and I just can't wait to share it with all of you. So with that being said, I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.